What is up everybody, it's Larry back with you and today we're going to be talking about this little guy right here. This is the DJI Osmo Pocket. So I did a first impression sort of vlog about this little guy right here. I'll leave a link for it down in the description somewhere up top here. You guys can check that out if you want to. Basically what I did is I opened it up and the next day after I got it charged and fully functioning, I just went out and did a little vlog with it that day. I still am not 100% sure if this is something that I'm going to keep. The price of it is a little expensive. But that being said, I am really enjoying when I do use it. I think it needs a few firmware updates to really bring it to the level of, okay, that's awesome. But there's a few things that I've learned and I wanna to talk to you guys just quickly. Let's just say this is a second first impressions video about the DJI Osmo Pocket. First, let's talk about a few issues that I had with it when I was first vlogging with it. And one thing that I pointed out, and my boy Jonathan left me a comment in the vlog and pointed this out, that there was a way to do exactly what I had suggested that they do, and that was have it as a 16 by nine aspect ratio on the little one by one screen. Now granted, this brings your picture to even smaller, but this is what I wanted because with it being a square, I couldn't really tell what part of my head was in frame, couldn't tell you know, if I was off a little bit because I like doing rules of thirds sometimes, like right now. Um, but he pointed out that there is a setting where you can change it to where you can have like exactly what I wanted, which was having the black bars at the top and bottom and showing the info there, and then that way I could see that the correct aspect ratio. So big shout out to Jonathan uh, for that one. The interface is pretty nice. Um, there's a lot of settings that are in the Mimo app attached to your phone. That I think is a big downfall. Like I can't even do 4K 24 through the Osmo Pocket. I have to connect it to my phone, go into Pro Mode, select 4K 24, and then unplug it and then go. And then if I wanna make any changes in this, it's gonna say, do you want to leave Pro Mode? Once you set it up, you can unplug it from your phone, that's great, but you can't do any other changes to the camera settings unless you exit pro mode which means you're basically going back into full auto i like to shoot anything 24 frames per second um, but like i said with what the only options you have now are 4k 30 and 60 and 1080 30 and 60. not a huge deal but for me someone that shoots 24 frames per second and that has for years that's a big deal i think with a firmware update like i said before you could add that into this and then we're good to go. So while I was in the process of editing and shooting this video for the Osmo Pocket this week, DJI pushed out an update that addressed one of the issues that I brought up in this video. The only frame rate you could choose between with 4K and 1080 is 30 and 60 frames per second. I, like I said, like to shoot in 24. So DJI pushed out an update that addressed a few things, but the main thing was this, and I thought, awesome. Then I thought there was a typo because it said it pushed out 25 frames per second. So now you have the option in camera to choose 25, 30, or 60. Still not 24, but it's not 30, so I guess it's good enough. The other thing I wanted to mention is that I noticed uh, I kept saying that it didn't have motion time lapse, and it actually does. What it did, what, what DJI did is with the original firmware that everybody had the pre-productions for, it actually had an actual selection for motion time lapse. And what they did is they got rid of that and actually within the time lapse settings, you can choose with the phone, uh, you can choose four up to four different points and you can run motion like that. So you have motion time lapse and you have 25 frames per second that you can choose internal to the camera. That's what it is. So I just wanted to give you guys that update before I push this video live in a couple days. Another thing that really bummed me out about this, and it's not really with the unit itself, well, it sort of is, let's talk about one thing. There's no way to mount this. There's no quarter 20 hole at the bottom. There's no bracket to go around to give you a quarter 20 hole. They actually have accessories, like a $20 bracket that goes around it, connected to GoPro accessories. So that's cool, but for 20 bucks, I think they should have included that with this, with this being $350. I think that accessory should have been in here. Another accessory that they have out that I think is around $60 US is you snap it into place. Unfortunately, you, you use this sort of universal little pin connector thing right here, which is great, uh, but you don't have a spot to keep this. Uh, but it's a scroll wheel and then a couple other function buttons. I don't know if $60 is really worth that. 
I think if you just use the follow mode, you're going to get what you need. I understand the scroll wheel, um, but I mean, because the only way you can move it right now is to actually try to get your finger right on that little screen and then slowly move it up and slowly move it down. Not ideal. You know, for $60, again, I think they could have figured out a way to incorporate that wheel into the actual pocket, uh, the Asmo pocket. They just didn't. Another huge thing, and I brought this up in my vlog, is that a lot of the reviews that you saw said, oh, look, it's got Cine and, and, and all these profiles. There's no, there's none of that in here. There's no profiles, there's no picture profiles, there's no Cine D, there's no Cine Light, there's no Cine nothing. This thing needs, has to have ND filters, which I have some on order. Um, so once I get those, I'll probably do more of a cinematic video showing you guys what this thing can really do. I've been holding off until those come in. And then another thing that's not in the software that was in everybody's video was motion time lapse, which is a huge thing. It's a it's a big selling point to me because that's what the Osmo Mobile 2 had that I used for a while. One, <laughs> there's no way to even stand this thing up to do that, um, but there's a workaround for that where I can plug my phone into this and then have a, a, a phone clamp with a tripod. We can do something, so that's not a huge deal, but it's not even in the software. So I don't know. They ended up taking it out after a firmware or something once the once everybody with their um, with their preview models got their videos out and got everybody excited, then DJI pushed out a firmware that got rid of it. I don't know. I'm assuming it's going to come back at some point. I hope it does because that's to me that's a very cool feature. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically you can pick two points. So say you pick like down here and up there and you're doing a time lapse and as your time lapse starts, it sort of goes through that motion. It's a great thing. I wish it was on here, but it's not. Aside from that, another little weird thing that they have. I wish they would have had a couple different microphones. Let me preface this. They have one that faces you in the back. So this is a vlog. This is for vlogging or for taking cinematic video without audio. There's no microphones on this back side here. Now this would be awesome, you know, vlogging, here you go, blah, blah, blah. But then when you switch it around and you want to get somebody else in the frame, the microphone's still on you. So if they're talking over here, the audio has got to go around and into the back. It's just not going to sound good. So I just have a real feeling that the version two of this is going to knock it out of the park because I think they're going to take all these things that people are complaining about. I think DJI was this close to really getting this at 100% perfect. Other than that, I think I'm going to keep this around uh, at least for a while. The battery seems to last quite a while. I haven't really put it through its paces yet, but I haven't had any issue with battery life on this. There's no interchangeable battery, but you can connect it to a power bank and actually record as you go. There's so much that you can add to this. There's so many accessories coming. Um, I saw on Amazon that they have like a little base you can put this in. It's not a DJI official one. They have the Wi-Fi base. I'm not too concerned with that right now. Just a little base, like it looks like it's almost 3D printed. Um, and I think that'd be nice for time lapses and motion time lapse if that ever comes back, DJI. But it's like three bucks. I've seen them anywhere from $3 to $10. So first impressions, my second first impressions is that this thing is pretty awesome. And it's just like 90% there, which is what you find on a lot of first gen items, whether that's cameras, cell phone, whatever, cars. When you get the first new model or the first model of a new version of something or a new something, there's always going to be something that you think of that maybe the manufacturer just didn't think of or couldn't add it in to this version of it, but they're already working on it for version 2. I think version 2, the Osmo Pocket 2, is going to be amazing. I think it's going to have a wider field of view. I think it'll have better microphones. I think it'll have a stand, a quarter 20 mount. I think all these things will be in it. So can I recommend this one for everybody? No. For $350, more than likely you're going to be better off with spending another 50 bucks and get yourself a GoPro Hero 7 Black. Um, I think the stabilization in that is, I would say, almost better than this, um, although it, the sides get a little wobbly because it's actual digital stabilization, not an actual gimbal. Um, but if you know what you're doing with this, I think you're going to get better footage out of this one. But for every other person, like the normal person, I think the GoPro is the way to go. Durable, this is not waterproof at all. They claim they're going to have some kind of waterproof case. But at, at that point, when you add all these accessories to it, you might as well just have your phone or you might as well just have something else. So... I like the form factor that they're going here. I, I hope they can improve on this. Maybe, like I said, on the second one, have a little dial wheel or a little thumb stick to where you can control the gimbal. Other than that, I think that's about it. 
I'll probably be updating you guys on this or using it for vlogging in the future on these videos. So if you guys enjoyed this video, you can hit the thumbs up down below. If you've yet to subscribe, you can do that down there below as well. And just so you guys know, we have a giveaway going on this month. Every month in 2019, we're doing a big giveaway. This month, we're doing an iPad Pro or an iPhone XS. So link for that is down in the description. Make sure you guys sign up for that giveaway. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of the other giveaways and all the great content we're putting out in 2019. I want to thank you guys for watching. Any questions about the Osmo Pocket, let me know down in the comments section and I'll make sure I hit you guys back up. Anything I missed or anything you guys want me to dive a little bit deeper into, I have a feeling I'm going to be doing more videos on this. I just wanted to give you guys sort of my second first impressions after I've been using it for about a week. So there's some things that I'm sure I'm missing, some things that I'll stumble across or some things that I'll realize should be there that I haven't noticed yet. It'll come with time and it'll come in a new video or an update to this video. That's going to be about it. Thanks guys for watching and I will talk to you guys in the next one.